So the uh, webinar is live now, Colm, and the attendees are joining. Joining after this writing, I'm to come in. So are they all in now, Paul? Yeah, I think we can get going, and um, it is being recorded as well, so okay, people right. can uh, catch up if they've missed anything. Excellent. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the this open day session at the um, Michael Smith at, uh, Graduate Business School, and in particular for the MSc in Human Resource Management. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Colin McLaughlin, and I will be presenting today. I'm joined by uh, Carol Deering, who is uh, in charge of our admissions pro uh, office, and Felicity McGovern, who is temporarily managing the HRM program, but is also uh, the administrative manager for the whole Smurfit School. Uh, we also have uh, kindly joining us today one of our current students, uh, Laura Karen, and she will talk briefly to you about her experience later on today as well. Okay, so um, in terms of the, the program, the MSc and HRM, um, some slides here. It's a, a program that's taught by leading research scholars in the field of human resource management and employment relationship. Um, it's the flagship program for our subject area, the, the, the subject area of human resource management and employment relations. So in terms of our priorities, um, it comes first and students on this program, you know, will have easy access to, you know, professors and uh, the range of lecturers for supports um, and discussion of ideas. And we offer you a research led program. Um, so the academics here are actively involved in researching subjects related to this topic. So I, I research around employment rights, such as gender equality or low paid workers. Um, I also work with Business in the Community Island. That's a, a membership organization of some of Ireland's leading firms uh, around uh, sustainability um, and workplace issues. Professor Bill Roach uh, researches on conflict management. That's a really important topic for HRM pr practitioners. We have Dr. Maria Bellazon. She's Ireland's leading expert on HR analytics. Now that's a you know a new but growing and increasingly important area of HRM. We also have a range of practitioners that come in and teach. You know they work full time and they come in and teach certain modules like employment law. So our employment law is taught by a practicing employment lawyer. Uh, mediation and HR competencies are, are other subjects that we have practitioners coming in. So you get that kind of real mix of. You know, cutting edge research that comes into the lectures and um, practitioners who are actively involved in the field. Um, we're the first specialist degree program in HRM uh, in Ireland. We, we were the first and um, the only MSc in Ireland that offers an international exchange program. I'll talk a bit more about that uh, shortly. We also offer CIPD accreditation. And again, that's quite important. And I'll talk about that in a moment as well. Um, you can do the program full time over 12 months or part time over 24 months. We often get some uh, mature students who are working in, in, a, in an HR role and want to, um, you know, kind of get promoted or move into a more senior HR role, uh, take the program part time. Uh, there's a very good employment rate from the program, currently about 90%. The average age of our students is uh, 27, and it's quite a diverse group. This year we have uh, 12 nationalities, around about 53% are international students, um, and the class size ranges between about 45 and uh, 65. So it's a good group um, and uh, you know, a range of, of diverse backgrounds and so on, um, and you know, excellent network opportunities in terms of uh, a career that you might move into. Um, what's interesting when you think about the times we live in, you know, COVID-19 and um, thinking about um, the challenges that society has faced over the last few years with so many people working from home, uh, many businesses un being unable to operate. And human resource management has been you know, front and centre to that, um, whether we think about wage subsidy schemes, the pandemic unemployment payments, redundancies, business failures, uh, developing working from home policies you know, addressing work-life balance issues. Um, and then of course, as we've gone back to the workplace and now the, the, the kind of in between the two, you know, what sort of uh, COVID health and safety policies do we have? What sort of work from home policies do we have? Uh, social distancing policies, you know, human resource management are very much central to that. So, you know, graduates of this program will graduate with an understanding of all aspects of HR management, the rewards, uh, analytics, competencies, recruitment, uh, employment law, and so on, and, you know, so you'll gain the skills that you would have would have been really important in dealing with something like COVID as it arose. But at the same time, um, 
you know, the COVID has thrown up some interesting questions for us, hasn't it, about, um, about society and about, uh, uh, you know, work. And for us here, we think that an MSc in HRM is not just about the skills that you need to be an HR practitioner, but you need to be able to think about bigger issues relating to work and relating to HRM. Um, you know, we think about value and rewards. How are people valued in the labour market? Uh, do people get paid what they are worth? And what is worth in a COVID world? So we think about essential workers. That was something we hadn't thought about until COVID. Um, you know, and who is essential to society to continue to function? They were people like supermarket workers, uh, residential care workers, uh, cleaners. Have, have cleaners ever been so important? Bus drivers, public transport drivers, people who work in meat factories, who pick our fruit and vegetables. All the people that had to go out to work when the rest of us were at home working you know, relatively safely. Uh, some of these people uh, got COVID and sadly, some of them also died. Um, and yet many of these roles are what we would consider to be unskilled, low paid, of little value. And yet they turned out to be essential. So I think that you know, raises some important questions. It turns out that people like me, university professors, are not, are not that essential. Um, so how do we you know, value people? How do we uh, regulate uh, occupations like the ones on the, on the slide? Um, what is the role of, of wage bargaining and uh, trade unions um, in the 21st century? Um, and we want our graduates to have a, an understanding about those wider kind of questions, the institutional and reg regulatory debates around societal issues that impact on HR, whether it be the gig economy, uh, issues of modern day slavery. It's an issue that organizations are being forced to, to deal with because of complex supply chains. And in, in, you know, as you go down the supply chain in developing countries, there are issues of slavery, uh, issues of gender equality. Uh, again, another issue where the pandemic has put the, the spotlight on um, gender inequality and the fact that um, more of the childcare and the ho homeschooling responsibilities fell on women and their careers have fallen behind over the last two years. Another example which might surprise you is Ireland has no statutory sick pay. Um, you know, about half of employers give it. It's an optional thing though. Uh, and in a pandemic, we've gone, people are sick. You can't come to work if you're sick because, you know, it'll spread. Now, in the pandemic, the government has introduced a scheme just for the pandemic so that if you get COVID, you can get paid. But that, as that begins to wind down, we're now back to the situation where, you know, frontline workers who uh, are low paid will not be getting, you know, have no statutory right for sick pay. You know, it's strange that it's taken as a pandemic to think, is that a good thing? So these are the sorts of questions that we want you to, to think about, you know, bigger challenges. Um, and I think that's quite important to think about coming to Smith, and not just for the MSC and HRM, but any of the MSCs, is that you will be challenged and you will be asked to struggle with, you know, complex ideas and complex questions that society is facing, whether that be sustainability or social inclusion or, you know, uh, um, a range of other factors that, that, we, that we currently face. Um, you know, the Smith School is the best business school in the country. It's one of the best business schools in the world. Uh, and you are going to come out with a master's if you uh, finish this program and you have to earn that master's you know it's, you're, you're going to have to struggle with ideas your brain is going to have to work hard but at the end of it you're going to be able to say you know what I earned that master's you know um, and I can face any challenge that uh, my career can throw at me and I think that's something to, to, to be aware of this will, will not be an easy course uh, but it will be interesting uh, and it will be challenging. Um, in terms of what you study, I've mentioned some of the topics already. This is the list of modules that we have. Um, you don't uh, do all of them, but you, you do a fair range of those. And there is some choice depending which pathway you take. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So human resource management, conflict, gender equality, uh, reward management, workplace learning, employment relations in I Ireland, uh, international issues and international HRM or work and employment in the global economy. Um, so those are the, the subjects that we currently offer. Um, there are three pathways on this course. The first is MSc with CIPD accreditation. The second is MSc without CIPD accreditation. And the third is with international exchange. And I'll talk about those now. So firstly, the CIPD. Uh, if you haven't heard of that, that's the professional body for HR in the UK and Ireland. It has 150,000 members worldwide. Uh, 6,000 of them are in Ireland, but most of them are in the UK, and there are others you know, in, internationally as well. It's really important if you want to work in HR in the UK or Ireland. If you're an international uh, uh, attendee of, of watching this now, and you're you know, from India or China or US, and you're thinking you're going, you, you'll, you'll come here for study and go back again, maybe not so important. Uh, CIPD is part of the wider uh, World Federation of uh, People Management. 
uh, HR networks um, and different countries have their own equivalents of CIPD. There's the SHRM in the, in the uh, US, uh, there's the um, NIPM in India, for example, uh, and they're all affiliated to this umbrella organization. Um, so the Irish office has a, a Irish um, wing has an office in Dublin, and as I say, has 6,000 members, okay? Um, and the exchange program, the, second, the third pathway, so the second pathway, the first pathway is with CIPD accreditation. They, they will dictate certain of those modules that I had on the previous list that you must do, one of which is a research uh, project. That's a big 20 credit project where you take a topic that you're interested in going and investigate it in the summer uh, uh, trimester um, and go out to organizations and actually do some research. Um, if you you know, from a different country and you say, I don't want to do CIPD, you, get, you can get to choose from any of those modules on the previous slide um, and the choice is more, more open. Now, the third pathway is uh, international exchange. You can go away in the second trimester uh, uh, to one of our partner universities. And these, these are the lists that we currently have. We have places in Cornell, the London School of Economics, the University of Warwick, Amsterdam, Bremen, um, Bucharest, Toulouse, Milan, um, uh, Levan and, and so on. Uh, many of them, are, they, they, you study in English. Uh, some of them are in, only offered in the, the, lang the host language, Spanish, Portuguese, German. So obviously you'd need to have a good grasp of those languages, but um, you know, that's, that's an option that's a, uh, that is available. Um, so the workload on this program is um, 90 credits um, and our modules here are 10 credits each. So that's 30 credits per trimester. So that's usually 33 modules per trimester is what students take, which is not a, uh, it's a good workload. It's, a, it's not too heavy. I, I know some of our competitors, you're doing six modules. Um, so I think three modules allows you time to really explore a subject um, and, you know, in some depth and uh, develop some expertise in it. For those interested in doing part-time, you would normally do it over two years, that's six trimesters. And therefore you would do some 20 credits in some trimesters and 10 in some others. And that allows you to balance, you know, your your uh, your occupational uh, demands as well. Um, so you have two semesters where you will need to complete twenty credits, and four trimesters with just the one module. Now, in terms of where you finish HRM careers, it's a, a common question that people obviously want to know. With, you know, what's available to me? And I suppose you, we see three kind of career paths evident over the past th a few years. The first is where you go into an in-out in-house HR function. And we you know there's a range of sectors that our graduates go into. IT companies, we have people at Google, Intel, Dell, and, and the, the other uh, IT companies all based around Dublin. Pharmaceuticals, telecommunications, banks, finance, insurance, retail, airlines, manufacturing, companies like Diageo. Um, and then there's a range of jobs in the public sector as well, hospitals, uh, universities, uh, the health service, uh, and the civil service, and then NGOs and charities. Um, and again, in both in Ireland and internationally, in all those uh, different types of sectors. Um, the second mainstream would be into consultancy. So Deloitte, EY, PwC, KPMG um, hire quite a few of our graduates, and then quite a few go into HR recruitment agencies. Um, so those would be the two main um, pathways that students would, would go from uh, finishing with us. There's a few people go into more industrial relations, employment, employer relations role. So um, IVEC, which is um, the main employer's body in Ireland runs a graduate program. And normally one or two of our students get taken on there. And at the end of that program, they get placed in an IVEC organization. Um, some uh, one or two students every now and then go and work for a trade union. And then occasionally a student says, you know, I really like the study and I'll, I'll do a PhD. And um, some of our graduates have gone down that path, have gone on to do a PhD at some of the world's leading universities, you know, Warwick, Cambridge, uh, Strathclyde, for example, um, and then have gone on to have a career uh, as an academic like myself. But as I say, most of you will, will be the first two pathways. Um, so those are the main areas. And as I think I mentioned at the beginning, about 90% employment rate. Um, so, you know, really good uh, outcomes for our students who take the HRM and MS, the MSc and HRM. So what I'll do now is I'll pass you over to Laura. Laura's just started the program in September and um, she'll share with you some of her uh, experiences uh, today. So over to you, Laura, thank you very much. Um, thanks so much, Colm. Um, yeah, so like Colm was saying, I'm in my first semester of the HR MSc. Um, just for a bit of background, I'm doing the one year master's program. Um, so I came straight from my undergraduate program and decided to do my master's just straight after. Um, I worked in UCD originally. 
Um, but you know what I've really noticed with the course is it's very diverse. Maybe if you're a bit concerned, you don't necessarily have to have a business background and um, you really just need an interest in in HR and employer relations. I know a lot of people on the course um, that I've been chatting to, they might have backgrounds in law or even media. I know there's some engineers on the course as well. And um, so it really just is more towards an interest in the subject um, as opposed to a strict business background, if you're a bit concerned about that. Um, I know personally, I'm looking at specialising in industrial relations. Um, I have a real interest in negotiations and conflict management. Um, but as you could probably see from Colm's presentation there, there's just such a range available um, with this course. Um, I know a lot of people when kind of asked in the course, they're looking at personnel management, particularly HR management, um, but also things like recruitment and training. HR analytics is a big section at the minute as well. And then a lot of people are very interested in talent management. Um, so there really is quite a range available um, and that's the great thing about this course. So I was in your position last year and um, I've done the research and, you know, I looked at all the courses available. This one really is one of the best. It's such a comprehensive course, um, which is really fantastic. Um, you really do as well. You get the benefit of the reputation of the Smurfit School, which is obviously world renowned. Um, so that's fantastic to have on the CV going into, um, you know, looking for your job search then in the next year or two. Um, I, again, like I was saying, really loved the opportunities available in terms of variety, so you can specialise with your module selection when you get here, you know, if you want to look at industrial relations, employment law, or just HR, and, um, you know, those options are really available for you to tailor your degree, um, particularly with your module selection. And um, there are also um, kind of extra supports available or extra opportunities, so I don't know, you'll probably hear during the open day, there's, you know, um, extracurriculars, there's the Global Leadership Programme, and there's the Intercultural Development Programme, and then there's stuff like the Writing Centre, which is all just to help, you know, focus you and help you develop, you know, outside of just the academic realm, which I think is really beneficial, particularly for your job search, that you have all those extra things kind of feeding into your CV. Um, that you're really prepared, not just academically, but more professionally by the time you're kind of exiting Smurfit. Um, again, this course has the option of CIPD membership or travel abroad, which, you know, isn't really on offer in a lot of other colleges, which I thought was fantastic that you got the choice as well. So you don't necessarily have to choose straight away. Um, you get your time to kind of get informed, have a think about it, kind of weigh up your options, which I thought was great. And um, there are also like great um, career networking opportunities. So I know um, I think one of the questions in the box there was just how does it prepare you um, for going out into maybe the, the career world? And um, so I've had so far, I mean, we're only in week nine of semester one and we've had several guest speakers in. There's been CV workshops. We have the careers network, which is really, really comprehensive. You can you know send in your CV to them. They really help you out. And then there's a lot of guidance as well with, you know, even in terms of graduate programs employment opportunities and um, stuff like that. And I really find as well, um, I mean, the class sizes are a lot smaller. And again, you only have three modules a semester. So you really have that time that you need to kind of start looking for jobs um, and focus really closely in on your lectures. But I find that the lectures as well, the actual lecturers are, you know, extremely helpful. It's not like undergrad where, you know, the classes are huge. You really get to, you know, get to know people just in your course and your lecturers as well, who are extremely supportive, I find. Um, and really kind of available to help if, you, if you're ready to ask for any kind of assistance. Um, so like that, looking at the classes as well, I mean, the class sizes are so much smaller. I came from a college where, you know, you could have 300 people in one lecture hall, and now it's 30, 40, 50, 60 people. And I mean, the diversity is just second to none. Um, like Colin was saying, you know, there's 50, 60% of the course is international students, which again, is not what I had in my undergrad. Um, and again, you know, going into the workplace, these are all skills that you'll pick up while you're here, while you don't even realize, you know, just making friends with people, networking in your course. Um, a lot of people as well may not have automatically come straight from undergrad. So it's people, um, you know, you'll be chatting to people who have industry experience, not necessarily, again, just in business, but, you know, across the spectrum. So, you know, the opportunities to pick up and learn from even just your peers are, you know, incredible. And that really I found is kind of being beneficial, particularly with projects and stuff and coming up to our research project, which I know Colin mentioned, because you really do need kind of access to different industries, different kind of career guidance, even. Um, and, you know, everyone is super, super helpful. There's a fantastic kind of atmosphere at Smurfit, which is just very kind of supportive and very, you know, helpful in kind of developing you as a person and your career wise kind of elements and um, looking kind of outside of the more you know, course focused elements, obviously COVID, I came from doing my 
entire final year in college online. And um, so now everything is being accommodated on campus, which is lovely. And, um, you know, and Smurfit's really going out of their way to make sure that everyone is looked after, everything is above board COVID wise. We have lectures in person, which is a bit unusual for the minute, but uh, definitely beneficial in terms of getting to know people. Um, we'll see how we feel about that, maybe closer towards exam time, but uh, definitely for the minute, very beneficial. Um, let's see, again, great support from Smurfit and UCD. So I know when I was kind of looking at applying, I started getting a bit nervous about the application, about what should be included in the application. But if I was to give kind of any advice, I'd say just get it in now, just do the application, answer the questions. Um, again, if you need any assistance with your application, UCD are fantastic. And um, you can reach out to myself or anyone else that's kind of noted on LinkedIn as being kind of in, in Smurfit, we can help you out, of course. Um, and as well as that, I, I don't know, I was kind of nervous as well. Obviously, the fees for, for Smurfit are maybe a bit higher than other colleges. Um, but Smurfit, again, has fantastic supports in place. So I myself applied for a scholarship, and that's why I'm able to participate. Here, I'm on the Aspire Scholarship Program, and there's a lot of opportunities available. So even if you just have a look, there's a page on the Smurfit website with scholarship information and again same as the application just put your name in see how it goes and you know if you're not in you can't win as they say so just get the applications in try not to kind of get too in your head about it I find particularly as well when I'm speaking to people there might have been you know people returning to college or who hadn't been in college for a while or were a bit nervous after kind of COVID and stuff and um, so even technology wise or getting back into the Kind of rhythm of being in college and um, smurfit offer a lot of supports there even kind of helping to navigate the technology which i i know a few people have struggled with and um, so again overall like i'm having a fantastic experience here i know a lot of the people that i'm in my course with and in other courses in smurfit are having a fantastic experience and i would definitely definitely recommend um joining us here on campus um and yeah just get those applications in um, but yeah, I'm happy to take any questions if you want to throw them in the Q&A box or if you want to reach out separately, maybe if you're a bit nervous, you can contact me on LinkedIn um, and I'll pass it back to the guys now if they want to take right, Thanks, back. Laura. Uh, Carol, you're going to facilitate the questions, aren't you? There's, there's one that's come in from Amy there. Amy, yeah. So, um, Laura, Amy was wondering, what did you study for your undergrad course and does it contribute to well to your studies now? Um, yeah, so that's actually a great question. I studied commerce in UCD. Um, and again, you would think that's very business orientated. Maybe it will feed a lot into this degree. But I found while I was at um, UCD, there was very limited options in terms of HR specifically and industrial relations specific modules. <clears throat> so again, you might notice courses like that are very much um, focused on maybe accounting or finance, things I wouldn't have been fantastic at. And um, so I found that this course is just, I mean, it's all HR, it's all industrial relations. Um, and again, you don't necessarily have to be from a strictly business background to get involved. I mean, I found obviously I specialized in as many industrial relations and HR modules as I could in my final year. Um, but everyone is learning from scratch. I mean, there's stuff that I can contribute um, that I would have learned to my undergrad. But again, there's people from completely different backgrounds who can contribute things that maybe I didn't know. Um, going into a lot of the projects and a lot of the research so again not necessarily a business background required but definitely an interest in HR and industrial relations. Thank you Laura. So there's a lot of questions coming in about scholarships and I know you're an awardee of the Aspire scholarship so you know you're a fantastic student so congratulations on that but I'd just like to mention to all the students joining us today that we have lots and lots of different types of scholarship so I'm going to post the link into the chat function now. Um, and many of the scholarships you will be considered for automatically. You don't necessarily have to apply. Um, and on top of this, you know, I think it's very important to remember that in the Smurford School, as Professor McLaughlin mentioned, and also Laura, our school is very, very prestigious. We receive thousands and thousands of applications. So there are questions coming in about when should I apply? Well, I suppose, the key message here is you need to be conscious that we do receive thousands of applications. For example, last year, we received 8,000 applications. So it's very, very important to submit your online application as soon as possible. So I will um, type in the link for information on how you apply, because there's a lot of questions coming in about how to apply, do you need references, etc. Also, there's a question coming in from a student regarding um, is it possible to speak to current students on the, on the program? 
So I have to say our web, website is very comprehensive. There is a function called um, Chat to Current Students on our Unibuddy platform. So this will give you an opportunity to, to connect with current students like Laura on the program, but also to our alumni. Um, so for each course, we have an overview for um, the course. Uh, we have the curriculum that Professor Colin McLaughlin took you through, but there's lots and lots of additional information where you can drill down and look at the module descriptors and the learning outcomes. There's also lots of fantastic videos and testimonials from our lovely professors and our alumni. And we would encourage all our applicants to visit um, these video testimonials. On top of this, Professor McLaughlin also mentioned all about you know, our careers. So it's very important for us in the Smurfit School um, that the students get a return on our investment. And Professor McLaughlin mentioned all the companies, you know, Ryanair, Diageo, PayPal, Google, Facebook, Accenture, AIB, Amazon, Microsoft. You know, I suppose it's important to remember that Dublin is home uh, to the headquarters of many of the financial service companies, the aviation leasing companies, the medtech firms, the pharma firms, and the global technology organization. So Dublin is also uh, known as the Silicon Valley of Europe. So it's really important. We want our students to, once they graduate from the Smurfit School of Business, they will have a global passport. Um, you know, essentially, you will have qualification that will have global recognition. Many of our students, um, after they graduate, particularly our international students, um, stay in Ireland uh, and get excellent jobs and internship positions. And as Laura mentioned, and also Professor McLaughlin, we host around six different career fairs every year. So we have an excellent dedicated uh, team of recruitment specialists that will help you get job ready. You know, basically our rankings and our accreditation are based on your career development. And a lot of it's based on your salary, three years post-graduation. So we want, you and your parents and the school to get a return on their investment. And we want to continue to maintain our excellent rankings and our, our accreditation. And as Laura mentioned, our professors are really, really nice. They're renowned for their academic leadership. They're very, very friendly. Like Professor McLaughlin, they have an open door policy and they will support you. And I suppose the key thing, if you join us, it's all about building your corporate network. Um, this year, we have 1,600 MSE students registered in all our majors, coming from 65 countries all around the world. We want our students to get a true global and international experience. This is very important for us. Um, other questions coming in. So there's another question here for Professor McLaughlin. Do you recommend any academic reading prior to joining the MSc in HRM? And I think this student is asking about, you know, if there are international candidates, is there a difference in relation to the module, for example, Irish employment law? Uh, yeah, I, my, my uh, response to that is always no. no. <laughs> you, if, you, if you come, you know, want to come here, you come here, you start in September and it's been a busy year. So my advice is before you come is have a really good break. You know, if you can, whatever you're doing, make sure you have a break over the summer and you come refreshed. And you know you come here to work. If if you're worried, you can contact um, myself uh, once you've been accepted into the program, and I can give you some of the readings for, for um, some of the courses. But I, you know, I I think the best, um, yeah, to, to have uh, you know all, take August off. If, Good advice. Yeah, Good advice. Have a lot of it. Come refreshed and ready to come in. I think that's the best thing. In terms of you know there are. Carol mentioned that, that Irish employment law, and that that is one of the things that, that there will be one or two courses that are Irish. Uh, Irish was, specific and if you think you're not going to stay in Ireland you know for sure and you're going to go back somewhere else then you might decide you know there is some choice around some of those things so you could take something else instead of that uh, but at the same time it's part of the cross-cultural experience is to learn about a new system isn't it so you know the principles of law will be applicable elsewhere um, and uh, you know it's, it's kind of useful to learn about the country you're coming to as well if I, if I was to go and study in India I'd, you know I'd want to not come in and just do a a generic HRM course, I'd, I'd want to know something about the country I'm in. I, I want to know lots about, you know, I'd come away and think, well, I, I learned a lot about India for the year I was there. And I think the same 
coming to Ireland and you know learn about the generic principles, but also something specific about the country. I mean, yeah. the other thing I'd add, just on the points you've made, that Carolyn and Laura, I just stress. I think one of the things that struck me last year particularly um, was the connections between current students and alumni, and it's not done through uh, ourselves. It's just, it's amazing that, I, I mean, I think the technology helps, but LinkedIn, the students were just using their initiative, contacting people, but we have a, we have a LinkedIn group for graduates of the program and, you know, and the, the openness of recent and long standing graduates to help current students is, is immense. So our class ambassadors last year organized the session off their own back with no input from us, where they got four graduates from, you know, one from 20 years ago, one from 15, one from 10, one from recently to talk about, you know, their careers. And um, they organized it entirely. I came along and, and sat in on it and it was brilliant. And I just thought that's the, you know, that's the kind of spirit I think that you get in the program like this. And you don't, you know, so you just reach out to these people, you say you're on the program and immediately they're, you know, obviously within their time constraints, they'll get back to you and say, hey, you know, great, how can I help you? And I think that's a really positive element of, of this yes. uh, program and, I, and I, I suspect that's across the Smurfit school as well as at Carroll you know that, that kind of Smurfit brand and name and Absolutely. community there's a sense of community that that goes out yeah. In, into yeah well you know I agree with you Colm you know we have a very robust global alumni network with over 100,000 alumni all around the world so our goal is to keep strong connections with our alumni and to hear the success stories of the careers going forward and this is really in, important to us and you know Pre the pandemic, we host, you know, we hosted a lot of alumni events all around the world. We have a lot of alumni chapters all around the world. Um, and look, we did host a lot of alumni virtual events. And hopefully next year, um, they will become more face to face. Um, so I think this is really important. Um, on top of that, you know, um, I just like to say that UCD in general, have been ranked number one in Ireland for graduate employability for the past four years. And also, um, just in relation to careers, um, you know, the intel coming from um, the corporate partners, they're, they're reporting very, um, very strong hiring plans. Um, and I think Ireland is very resilient. I think we're really experiencing a very quick bounce back. Um, and I know that Davy Brothers recommend, um, had a forecast, a GDP rate of 3.5 last year. And I think they have reforecasted re this GDP rate. And it looks like now the, the new GDP rate will be uh, 10%. So, you know, I think the future and the career prospects for the students after they, they graduate is very, very strong. Um, would I see if I have any? Oh, um, Laura, here's a question for you. Can you take us, you mentioned the Intercultural Development Program. Can you take us through what was involved? Have you participated in this already? Um, and can you take us through a little bit about this particular course? And um, yeah, of course. So the Intercultural Development Program here at UCD, I know there's information available for it on the website if you want to have a look through. Um, but for myself, it's hosted by a fantastic lecturer. Her name is Dr. Linda Yang. I mean, she's just unbelievable. Um, but it's essentially to help you develop those intercultural competencies, working with different cultures, understanding and maybe being conscious of different cultures. Um, and I thought it was just fantastic. So basically how the program works is you sign up. Um, I think everyone's auto-enrolled actually um, to begin with, because it, it's seen as really one of those essential elements of your kind of time at, at Smurfit, particularly because of the, the intercultural background of you know, the course that you're going to be participating in. Um, and then obviously the global work opportunities available after you finish. So how it works is there's a base level and then an advanced level um, ICD certificate. Um, and these are, I think, attached then to your diploma at the end of the year. But essentially, you have the opportunity to complete your basic certificate online. And um, so what that involves is just watching a series of lecture videos from Dr. Linda. And then you kind of participate in some Google Doc submissions and then a few quick kind of questions about the content afterwards. And again, it's a real variety of stuff. There's kind of how to identify different cultures um, and even stuff kind of more centralized on yourself so identifying your kind of um, 
team role, how you contribute to teams, your communication styles. So it really is quite varied, but definitely worth giving it a go. Um, so then there's um, the advanced certificate, which is if you want to take it up a step, which I'd always recommend um, going into your CV and your job search. And that just involves a series of workshops. So there's six workshops available and you can participate in three then to get your advanced certificate. And they're essentially just one or two hour workshops on campus here with Linda. Um, and again, there's people participating from all of the master's programs. So it's not just a HR specific kind of um, program. It's, it's for everyone, which is even better. I mean, I've met so many people even just through the ICD program. Um, which is fantastic and you just go in and you do a very kind of it's it's a very informal sort of workshop and it, it's great it's great fun actually as well but you're learning a lot while you're there and you get to do kind of little projects and stuff in the workshop um, and then that contributes towards your advanced certificate then um, and obviously that goes right onto the CV and up on your LinkedIn when you're done so that's my experience so far I definitely recommend it and um, for anyone that's kind of looking at coming to Smurfit um, I think it's really worthwhile. Thank you Nora that's excellent news. And I also think, you know, the ICD uh, program and our global leadership program really differentiate uh, the Smurfit School from other uh, Irish institutions. I don't think there are any courses like that offered by other national institutions. And I also think the fact that you will receive two certificates on successful completion of the ICD program and the GLP, if you participate in the global leadership program, that will help you, uh, that will differentiate you when you go and look for a job, something, that, something that's really beneficial um, to a prospective employer. Um, so thank you so much for that, Laura. Let's see, have you any more questions? Check. No, I think that's all the questions now. Last chance for questions, guys. I'm going to put up my um, email address and also Smurfit admissions. And if you have any queries, you're welcome to email me directly or smurfit.admissions at ucd.ie. Again, we have a very comprehensive website. Um, very user friendly. It's great. Thank you, Carol. And thank you to Laura and uh, Felicity. And um, thank you, everyone, for coming along. And uh, as, as uh, Carol said, feel free to contact her. Feel free to contact myself um, if you have questions. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, con consider applying to the MSc in HRM here at Smurfit. And we might see some of you uh, come next September. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the, the open day session. Okay, goodbye. Bye everyone. Thank you for joining.